Okay, so there's the cat. Do this. No. No. Good boy. No. Still walking. So you see, the pressure is the same. It's the same kind of feedback. No, Bill. But you see how I grabbed his, I got all of his attention and then watch his ears. All right, I'm doing something training wise that I have been against for quite some time and told clients not to do um, because I don't want you to band-aid the problem. But here's what I'm figuring out. What I've been learning the last couple weeks is when you have an animal like a horse or a cow or livestock, it's important to control their entire head, not just the top portion of their neck. So with a dog like Billy, I have a slip lead on him, prong collar, doesn't matter. He blows through a prong collar, can't get, like the prong collar's not gonna stop a behavior, it's just to give feedback and it just doesn't, it doesn't phase him. I've got all the foundation, right? Like we do our loose leash, he knows his heel, He's with me. I still am to the place where I haven't been able to get him around other animals on a leash, walking by them without him wanting to take both of us over there, regardless of what tool or what, what I have on him, regardless of the pops and the corrections and the feedback, his whole, his neck will just, I can pull the neck, but he will still do what he wants to do. So this is what we're doing now and this is what changed this dog in two days this is something i've been talking to jerry about the last couple of days and this is where we were it made sense like why haven't we done this before because when you use a gentle lead or a head halty it just stops the animal from pulling that's not what i want to do i don't want to just band-aid the situation i want to stop it so i'm going to give feedback with it I'm I'm going to give him feedback but here's what's gonna happen with this when I have this fit correctly now I can control the entire head and get his attention versus just his neck and my pressure is still coming from back here not down here but from back here so I'm giving, the, I'm giving the feedback from back here, but it's controlling the entire snout as well. So I'm gonna walk down the street that I avoid with him because there's pigs and chickens and dogs, and this is what it looks like. Now keep in mind, I'm going to be moving away from this. This is not permanent. This is simply to give him feedback and get his entire attention off of these other animals so that we can walk with a loose leash and calmness. Because before this, He's just too much dog. I couldn't introduce him to anybody. So right here, these are all, there's a cat up here. Like this is all a really, really big deal for him. This is the house that has the little pigs. Uh-uh. Okay, so there's the cat. Look at this. No, no. Good boy. No, still walking. So you see, the pressure is the same. It's the same kind of feedback, no Bill. But you see how I grabbed his, I got all of his attention and then watch his ears. That's a dog that's with me, good boy. And once we get a little bit better at this, no, come on. Then we'll go back to a slip lead. And then I'll still have a loose leash and this is how I'm going to introduce him to some of the dogs. So I'm doing a YouTube video in the next couple of days of this for all the breakdown and the differences of how this is effective, when it's effective, if you should do it. Again, I can't stress enough. You got to have leash foundation. Don't do this just to stop your dog from pulling because dogs that pull, they're going to rub that raw on their nose. They're still going to pull. You still have to communicate with your dog. That's not the point of doing this. The point is, I need to get his whole entire attention, all of his head with me, as opposed to me just pulling on that neck, trying to get feedback because a dog with a neck like this, he just doesn't care. But now he cares, good boy. So again, you guys, the tool is to help you communicate with your dog. Whether you're using a prong collar, a gentle lead, a slip lead, 
It is to help you communicate. It is not going to fix your dog. You have to lead the way. You have to be a better version of yourself in order to do this. And if you're struggling in any way, shape or form, before you use any tool, before you try doing this uh, slip lead variation, before you use, before you use a prong collar, before you do anything, if you don't have the foundations, I highly suggest you do that. I put together that Leash Foundation course. It's 20 bucks, it's seven videos. It's the full breakdown. Get that course, it's yours. You watch it whenever you want and then decide where you need to go from there. But you've gotta, you've gotta be the leader for your dog. You gotta create structure for your dog. If you're not doing any of those things, it just doesn't matter what tool you use. Oh my God. If this video was helpful, you guys, I've got a lot more footage. I'm doing, I just did this on the fly on my camera. Uh, please forgive the, the shitty quality, <laughs> but I have a lot more coming up because I've got a lot of dogs that need to be worked through this. And there are a lot of clients that are struggling right now, whether it be they don't know how to use the prong collar effectively, they don't want to use a prong collar, or they just aren't candidates for it. So subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, um, give it a thumbs up if this was helpful. And uh, remember, if you want a better dog, you got to lead the way. I'll see you guys in the next video.